I'm Nick Stern, talking to you from the London School of Economics. Um, thank you very much for asking me to join you in this way on this very special occasion. The transition to the low carbon economy is the inclusive growth story of the 21st century. Let me try to explain. The world economy has to grow in the next 15 or 20 years to overcome poverty. At the same time, we must grow in a different way if we're to avoid dangerous climate change. That means that emissions must peak as soon as possible and be cut by at least 30% in the next 15 years. That could get us on a path which would achieve the targets of the uh, COP21, the Paris Agreement, to hold temperature increases to well below two degrees. It's very important that we do that. The recent IPCC report has shown that the difference between 1.5 and 2 is really significant in terms of damages and to go beyond two is seriously dangerous. That could involve, if we went beyond two or more, we would halt and reverse economic development and force hundreds of millions of people to move with real risks of severe and extended conflicts. These stakes are very big. This new type of growth must radically reduce carbon and move to net zero emissions as close as we can to 2050. And we're in a hurry to establish this new type of growth because infrastructure will roughly double in the next 15 years and the world economy will double in the next 20. We must not lock in workers and their children into old and dirty technologies. The good news, as we lay out in the uh, recent report of the new climate economy, is that the transition to the, zero to the zero emissions economy is the growth story of this century. It employs the technologies of this century, not the technologies of the 19th and early 20th century. That means renewable power and storage. It means clean transport. The era of the internal combustion engine is coming to an end. It means much better managed cities, which we now know how to do in strongly uh, digital ways. It's inclusive. It's poor people who benefit from the better public transport. It's poorer people who benefit from the job opportunities, renewables and so on. And it's poorer people who benefit from cleaner air, from having cities where we can move and cities where we can breathe and be productive. And indeed, it's poorer people who benefit uh, from ecosystems which are robust and fruitful. That's why it's inclusive. So how do we get there? First, we must price carbon and mandate carbon disclosure. People have a right to know whether their pensions are being put into the technologies of 100 years ago or the technologies of the future. We have to, we have to accelerate investment in sustainable infrastructure. We have to foster private sector innovation. And very importantly, we must also ensure a just transition with people at the centre. The benefits are many and large. Not only will we have stronger growth, but 65 million extra jobs by 2030. The voice of workers and trade unions in this growth story is critical to ensure a just transition for all workers. That means new training facilities if people are dislocated through losing their jobs. It means new finance for small entrepreneurs. It means revitalising key towns and cities by moving job opportunities there. And of course, it means stronger social protection. So I salute the work of the ITUC in not only supporting the Paris goals, which of course provide the new opportunities I've described and protect their children from the threats of uh, climate change. They not only supported the Paris Agreement, the ITUC, but they also put just transition on the agenda and made sure it was enshrined in that crucial 2015 Paris Agreement. These were great achievements of the ITUC and I congratulate you on your fourth ITUC World Congress. Thank you for allowing me to participate.